this is like a 50 minute video basically so I'm probably gonna watch like 25 minutes or so today and then 25 minutes or so tomorrow and then we get into Diablo 4 rogue stuff so let's check this out. I really don't know what this is. And today we're going to be discussing a story and tale and doing a big deep dive into one of the most disgusting, despicable, and awful situations that I have personally witnessed in the history of TikTok. And trust oh, me, no. there are a lot of disgusting and despicable stories in the history of TikTok. This is... I mean, I think he's on the wrong site if he's looking for disgusting and despicable stories, because... TikTok is tame, sir. TikTok is real tame. If you want to look at some wild stuff, those are the websites we can't mention. It's a tale of crime, deceit, lies, manipulation, scamming, and most importantly, tattoos. In a saga oh, no. which has now completely taken over TikTok, garnering millions of views, people are giving their outcry, their two cents, their words, people in rage, shouting, getting the pitchforks out about the sheer injustice of this situation. Yes, what? my friends, welcome to Tattoo Gate. What the fuck is this? One of those pictures I saw something that said tattoo consultant. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, you do a consultation with the artist before they do the tattoo so you can see the work so that they can figure out what they're drawing and how to go about it the best way for that part of your body, etc. etc. Like, what, what do you mean? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I understand what you're probably thinking right now. Fraser, you have not got a single tattoo on your little six foot two body, and I am six foot two. Please do not measure me. And I understand your complaint. I understand you're probably thinking you've got no business. Shit. Why don't you just go do something better with your time? And I will simply counter that by saying, hold up. You're about to spend your next 30 minutes to an hour watching a video about a topic which you have no idea about, and you're calling me a loser. Let's get things straight here. We're both absolute losers, so strap in and get ready for the ride. But also, you're probably wondering, but what actually... Little does he know that people watch my reactions to their videos as well, which means that everybody else that's watching this, watching that, is also a loser is Tattoo Gate. Well, it's a controversy going around on TikTok involving an alleged scam of where people have been severely okay. overcharged for certain things in the tattoo business, which have now been exposed as deceptive practices and also has outright led to the outright downfall of somebody's tattoo career, whilst also leading to an eight-part apology from a professional tattoo artist and multiple people coming out and exposing the situation and the deceits and lies behind everything. But honestly, my main take from all of this <laughs> Okay. is why does every single controversy on TikTok have gate in front of it? You've got cake gate, you've got pink sauce gate, you've got now tattoo gate, you've got char- It's because they were all up in arms over the whole Russia gate and the pizza gate stories, right? Like that's really all it is. And because that's it, it's stuck. Which literally just goes all the way back to trying to tie those situations into something similar to Watergate. Charles's big chubby fingers gate. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I, I honestly don't know why everything has to have gate in front of it. But uh, yes, this is Tattoo Gate, and with that, let's get into the beginning of this story. This story starts off with this lovely woman called Courtney, also known as Running Mom of Boys. And I'm not really sure what I can say about Courtney. I don't know who this person is, what? other than she runs this fine TikTok account right here, and she seems like a very sweet and wholesome person. Somebody which, honestly, I don't think has actually done any bad in the world whatsoever, and you're probably thinking, <coughs> Fraser, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover and honestly you're probably absolutely right and it says a lot about my character but given all the research that i've done in this video and given all the insight that i now currently have this person genuinely surprises me because they have been absolutely taken advantage of and despite that they have been absolutely lovely and nice to the people that have done them dirty so yes what has actually happened here well, it's really weird like, that, that almost just says that there's something wrong with her that you can be completely taken advantage of, treated terribly, and be like, well, well that's just fine and dandy. I'm perfectly great. Look at me go. Woo. What? Well, pretty much a few weeks ago, because yes, I am late to the story, Courtney uploaded a Why multiple part you TikTok where she spoke about her experience. It's like she's emotionally broken or something, right? Like That's the way that that makes that seem. Is like she's just emotionally broken, and she's just like, oh, no, I just am always going to be 
this kind, lovely, caring, per forgiving person in all points in time. And it doesn't matter if you scam me and you don't care or anything. I'm just going to always be this. Like, people have a variance in the way they go about different situations. Like, the most timid people you will find are also very assertive given the right set of circumstances. Like, to make make it seem like you're just this one type of outward individual is I don't know why you would do that unless you're mentally unstable it's either that or um, that's just the way you choose to present yourself to the world through the internet because you think that's the best way to appear and you don't want to uh, be genuine with a certain tattoo artist called Lindsay and she pretty much Trying stumbled upon Lindsay's page basically. and thought the art that she posted was good. The tattoos that she did in the past <laughs> were seriously good and she wanted to pay the price to get art from this person, Lindsay. So what she did was commissioned a fox piece. And no, ladies and gentlemen, not this type of fox, this type of fox. But typically this just seems like your regular tattoo story, you know, you want a little jab into your arm. Personally, I'm a big old pussy, you can never do that. That, but you know, you want a tattoo, you get a, a, a reference photo, you take it to a tattoo um, artist, you maybe have a consultation, and you start to develop some form of art piece that you are going to have placed on your body for the rest of your That drawing is what you would get if I did it. That's what that is. Your life, which you will probably regret in two years' time. And with that, that leads us into the first TikTok in this story, because you and I know that this is absolutely not what happened, and things became an utter disaster. Story well, time. I'm sure that's where we're part, going, yeah. I'm try to go as fast as I can. So, um, I wanted a tattoo by this artist who I love, who's very talented on Instagram. I'm not, this is nothing to do with her talent as a tattoo artist, just kind of uh, the business practices that I've dealt with over the last 24 hours. So I um, booked a consult with her a couple months ago. Consult was non-refundable. It was $180. That was listed on her website. That's fine. I uh, the consults being non-refundable is fairly typical, to be quite honest. Like, uh, to be able to get a refund from a lot of artists for the consultation, you have to uh, cancel like two weeks in advance, three weeks in advance, depending on how good of an artist and therefore how much of a demand they have. They'll, uh, they have certain, certain setups because they're setting aside time to do your consultation. They could spend tattooing somebody like that. It's you're cutting into the work that they're doing with other people that are also paying and the time that they need to do that work. So it's in some cases, you canceling the consultation if they give you back the money what happens is they now have a gap where they're not getting paid that they were expecting money and business that they could have otherwise had and so that's why it's not refundable because that is time that they booked to professionally take care of you i paid that we had a zoom consult on friday i showed her these uh reference photos as to what i wanted for a typical half upper arm sleeve um, we kind of talked about it a little bit. I said I wasn't really picky on what kind of flowers I wanted. I wanted the fox to look like he was running. Um, foxes were my favorite animal. I said I wanted some watercolor on the fox. The flowers were just going to be whatever she thought would look good. Um, That's fair. She then proceeded to tell me after I had already booked my, I paid her the consult. She told me that she had these three options for her design fee. So she charges a design fee to design her tattoos. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are two issues on hand here. Firstly, I am extremely sweaty right now because it is the summer and I simply do not react well to the heat. But secondly, I have never heard of somebody paying money for a sketch or a consultation. Now, maybe when it comes to a sketch, I can... Yeah, and like I said, there's... Depending on the demand of the artist, some of them will charge consultation fees that are non-refundable and that that's not very uncommon. <laughs> I've seen it, and it's not that big of a deal. It's literally you're coming in, and you're taking up maybe 30 minutes to an hour of their time. They're, like, the price she was charged was exorbitant. It's normally like, yeah, I charge like a $50 consultation fee. That way, it's if you're cutting into their ability to actually take care of a client that's got everything ready, and would like to be in at that same time to get tattooed and instead they're coming in after that. See what I mean? 
it's it's time that they take out of their day to book you for something. Granted, it's not like they're always non-refundable. The only people I know that do this and that I've seen that do this all have a like a stipulation like it's non-refundable within one week of the appointment. Like you have to cancel more than a week out, right? Which isn't unreasonable to ask for. I mean, and so, for some of these people it's it's like they booked you on a weekend and normally don't work weekends and are sacrificing time with their kid that they normally don't get to have. Like it's, like I said, it's not very uncommon. It's not something everybody does. It's it's literally for artists that have reach a certain point in uh, in demand. You can see it happening with somebody who's like a, a, a top level tattoo artist. They've got millions of followers. They're tattooing Kim. You don't K. have to be that um, big. You really don't. Kim J. A, a lot of it's just where you work. Like if you work in the right places, you go to the right conventions, you network with the right people. A lot of it's really just being in the right place. If you are in the right tattoo shop, it's busy all the time, and you'll have people come in off the street. It's not like you have followers on the internet that are like, "Oh, give me the tattoo." It's, it's the fact that you're in a good location. So, no, not that. Jeez, no, not him. Not certainly not that man. Do not tattoo, Kim J. Don't. That would be really controversial. <laughs> What I'm saying here is it, okay. I can maybe get there being a fee for a consultation and a sketch if it was a very famous tattoo artist, but Lindsay... I really don't think he understands. He's literally only saying that a tattoo artist should have a consultation fee if they have a large following, which having a bunch of followers does not mean that you have a lot of work. You might just have a lot of people that like looking at your art and your content but they aren't trying to go get work from you at all. Having followers does not mean that you are a great tattoo artist with a high demand at all. A lot of it comes down to location. Just being in the correct place at the right studio during the right periods of time, etc. It has like it's not at all you have a million followers on the internet, so you must be very busy, you need consultation. Like that's not how it works. <laughs> she's not really that famous as you can see she's got like 6,000 followers that certainly isn't the case here but yeah not only has she charged a consultation fee but a very high fee albeit that a lot of the comments just started to point out this is very weird as you can see here are people who actually have had tattoos and they were thinking this is strange I've never experienced a consultation price when just simply speaking See, and like I said, a lot of these people, oh, I've never had to do a console. I've never had to do a console. I've got a bunch of pot tattoos and done from a lot of people all over, a lot of people with a lot of credibility, etc., etc. And I said, it's not everybody who does it. It's literally people who are in a situation where they're constantly getting burned. Like, I see people set up to do consultations and – or not setting up to do consultations, but it's people that I know that do tattoos – complain regularly about people who have set up to come in and do a consultation and then just flat out and like they don't show they won't answer their phone they don't respond to an email or a text message they just blow off the artist and the artist set aside an hour for them like i said like that's an hour of time that they could have with their kid like with split custody and Hey, you know, I'd like to have my time with my kid that's supposed to be with my kid, but this is the time that worked for you, right? And not just like, oh, this happens once or twice, but like this happens several times. And then not only that, but the consultation fees that I know of being charged also get wrapped up and included into your overall tattoo fee as well. Like it's not... Like, it basically ends up being like, okay, you paid $50 for your consultation, and I'm going to take out $50 off of the total price of the tattoo because you already paid that during the consultation. Like, it's literally just to make sure that you're not wasting their time. To a tattoo artist, because to be honest with you, it doesn't really make much sense. You're paying to have a conversation there, being like, oh, yeah, could you possibly do this? What sort of art do you do? What sort of work do you do you work in? You know, you don't just go into like, I don't know, a tool shop and you, you speak to the, see, the tool man not, about what tools they like to use if they've got any. See, and that's not the consultations that these artists I know of are paying for either. You literally just send them an email with everything he's mentioning and there you go. They already know what kind of art you do. If you just walk into a tattoo studio 
there's a book with photos of all the tattoos. Well, not all of them, but there there's a portfolio for each artist. You see all the art. If it's online, you see all the art. Like this is that's not something you're worried about discussing. You see it. You tell them what the idea is, etc. The consultation is typically when you come in and you're looking at the piece of art that they did based off of what you said. Discussing placement. Discussing detail. Discussing, like you're getting into the nuance of the tattoo and how you want it done. It's people that are spending, a, like expecting to do something like their whole back with a specific theme. And you want to make sure you do it right. What he's talking about being a consultation, I've never heard of anybody paying for. But it's doing something that's a consultation fee that I do see people do and call a consultation fee. It's not, it's not even the same thing. They're, they're at a whole different point in the process and just simply making sure that the tattoo is going to be exactly what it is you want so that there's no mistakes. You don't get like the never like you don't get you don't get like never tattooed here on your arm and it says any -E vre instead of any -E ver or something right like it's it's to avoid stuff like that but with a very large detailed tattoo that has a specific image in your head the examples which they should possibly use and you don't expect to walk away from that conversation getting charged 150 dollars but yeah no and like i said that that price is really high because even if doing this with the people I know that do that for a portion of this process that's much further than what he's describing, it's only 50 bucks. And then it's included as like a, a discounted price off of the actual tattoo work. Like they wrap it up into the same thing. And a lot of time that consultation is literally like two, three hours before your actual tattoo at the most so that they can make sure that it is how it is before it's all finalized and getting done it's not like a consultation three weeks before it's it's a consultation maybe the day prior and then you go in the next day first thing and it's an all day long tattoo right like it's basically in the situations i know of it's something that is to make sure that you actually want the tattoo because it's it's going to be a large commitment and it's an expensive tattoo it's not something that's just like ah yes here on your shoulder good for you it, unless that's going to be a very expensive tattoo because of the amount of detail you want which is very possible and that's like I like said if it's going to be a valuable tattoo which is usually just one that's very big then there you go but I it's, you do a small one like this tattoo versus this tattoo this is way cheaper there's much less detail than there is in this. That decides price as well. Here, it seems that that very much more was detail, the case. more price. You and want yeah, to make sure you do it right. The comments were a little bit confused by this. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you can probably tell at this point, this whole situation is going to become a massive financial debacle. A financial debacle, and I do not say debacle lightly. A debacle which goes into one of the biggest and strangest and stupidest deep dives that I think I've ever seen, and a true representation of exploitation. I can't even speak English. Exploitation in the industry. Now, before we go any further. I do just want to say I have a lot of respect I have tons of respect for tattoo artists out there artists in general are extremely underpaid and I want to say that I don't think that this situation should be a representation that tattoo artists are overpaid in fact I think most people would say most tattoo artists are quite underpaid and in a lot of situations masterpieces are curated and I think that these people should be financially compensated for curating those masterpieces which aren't just drawn on a piece of paper but are literally inked permanently onto somebody's skin. I think people should be paid well for that. But this situation isn't a case of just somebody being overpaid. It's it's definitely not that. And yeah, even if you like me and you it's think fair. $150 or $160 consultation fee is ridiculous, you could at least say, it well, if, if at the ending of it a masterpiece was created, maybe it was it was worth it. But um, that's exactly what did not happen in this situation. And this is far more than just 
paying ridiculous and extortionate fees. This is people being lied to and taken advantage of and exploited and just in general, somebody being a massive bellend. The first option was $1,500 plus tax and you get um, a concept sketch and you can make one minor change and then a final design that you'll review. Uh so basically what she said right here, we'll listen to it again, because she pretty much described everything that's already done by the time that I'm used to hearing of any kind of consultation from people I've, I've heard of doing them. The couple people I know that do them and the people I've heard them talk about, basically. Concept sketch, and you can make one minor change, and then dollars plus oh, tax, wait. and you get um, a here concept sketch, and you can make one minor change, and then a final design that you'll review. The final design that you review. So here's the thing is the consultation is like, here's the sketch. And then you say, yeah, okay, I'd like this change, but they aren't limiting you to one. They're, it's your tattoo. It's going on your body. If it's like, uh, yeah, I don't really like the color on these flowers. Can we make it like this? What if we do that? We'll have this shading here. What if we did some more detail in this portion or whatever? Like, And they'll do all that. It just makes the price change. They don't tell you, yeah, it's going to be $1,500. And then, hey, by the way, here's here's a design that's just a, the sketch. And here's uh, your one change that you get to request, which makes no sense to be a limit. And then you do this. Here's the final one. It's more of a, hey, here's pretty much the finished thing. This is, this is the way that I've drawn it in the way that I like it, the way that I think it looks good. How do you feel about it? And you can request the changes you want. They update it. If you wanted changes, bam, they change it. They show you the next one and you go, ah, oh, yeah, that's right. Or, oh, no, this, this, and that. Boom, there you go. Now you're ready. You have it done. Once again, they're charging her a fee for something that is prior to where they should be done. Because this is what I was talking about you already, like you're sitting down to go over. This is for her after they've already done a consultation. So what was the consultation? That like That's people using the same word to describe different parts of the same process. Um. Concept, the option number two was $3,500 plus tax, um, where you got two concept sketches and a couple changes. And This isn't how you charge for tattoos, like plain and simple. The way that they're just throwing out prices like this, this isn't how you charge. Um, a final design review again. And then option three was $6,000 plus tax, where you would get multiple sketches and lots of reviews and lots of changes and like a canvas. Six thousand dollars yeah it doesn't make any sense that makes no sense the way that they're making up these prices makes zero sense leave just leave if they aren't telling you i charge this much an hour and i am estimating this piece to take this many hours so it'll be somewhere around this much money if that's not what they're telling you leave because they're lying for a sketch now, if I'm paying six thousand dollars for a, for a sketch, I want the sequel to the Mona Lisa. Thank you very much. I I I am I'm not ever really seeing a justification where a sketch, not an art piece, just a, a sketch. Now, I'm not saying sketches aren't necessarily art, but for six thousand dollars, I'm going to want some some good at least coloured in art. And yes, they go on to explain this three part system where you pay one thousand five hundred dollars plus tax. Don't forget the tax. You then get one con. Yeah, don't forget the tax. Like because they're in the US and you're in the UK so maybe you don't understand this but the taxes are rung up after everything else it's not just ah oh, it's $1500 and the taxes included that's not the way it works in America it's $1500 and then plus what the government adds on to it that's how everything here works for the most part
like paying for your gasoline through vehicle is about the only difference. Concept sketch and one change, you're gonna pay $3,500 plus tax and get two concept sketches and a couple of changes, or you can even play a massive weapon $6,000 plus tax to get multiple sketches and lots of reviews and changes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm not gonna lie to you, when it comes to the $6,000 package, that's the one I would usually expect with any regular tattoo artist without paying extortionate fees of $6,000. No. That could be going towards my tuition, actually, no, not in this country. It could be going to, like three quarters of my tuition fee and that's still quite a lot i i don't think there is any justification out there for realistically a sketch being six thousand dollars but ladies and gentlemen boys and no. girls as i said it's not just about the money in this situation yes they are absolutely extortionate prices but it's also how these phases or part three system is it's used i don't even know what to call it it's weird extortionate system is, is is used because in this story courtney yes she went ahead and commissioned Lindsay. she gave her as two reference photos to use to show what she would want in her tattoo sketch and Lindsay went away she she got a what's weird is that they took that as a consultation that's not the consultation at all i, I can't stress enough that that is what they were calling the consultation was sitting down and being like here's what i would like and here's my references and they're calling that the consultation that they charge for. That's not right. A little pen and some and papers out, and what she came up with was this monstrosity. I, I don't really know what this. And I'm not just saying that it's bad. I'm not saying it's monstrosity because it's bad. I'm saying it's a monstrosity because this costs six thousand dollars. She couldn't even color it in. No, because this is literally what the sketch for a tattoo would look like. Because this isn't the final. This is the sketch. So that it's like, yeah, something like this where you got the fox here, some petals coming around it, this like blade of some sort of grass or whatever, the stem for the flowers or whatever it is. And then these flowers here, some more leaves. And I'm thinking this is kind of what it'll be. Yeah, that's, that is a sketch. Yes. Congratulations. A sketch and an actual drawing are not the same thing. I mean, this literally looks like somebody has spent like 10 minutes doing a little doodle yeah. whilst they're listening to their university professor drone on about something. This is something that I would have drew in school. But the main problem is, is in these reference photos that Courtney showed, they were clearly full foxes in a certain way. And when you compare it to this reference photo, obviously this is only half a fox here. It's like a yeah, hybrid fair flower fox messed up transformer weird looking thing and that's exactly not what she asked for so that's one problem here outside of the money issue because what she has paid for isn't what she has got that then leads us into issue number two because that's that's fair like she showed pictures of a full fox and she'd made it clear she wanted the fox running according to what she said right so you'd you don't really get any of that out of this. It doesn't hurt that fox and hers doesn't really look like it's running. You can't tell because you only see half the fox. If you saw the whole fox, you might be able to tell it's running or not. It's a fair critique. Uh, once again, it's called a fucking sketch. If you don't know what the difference is between a drawing and a sketch, the fact that they tell you that you, you'll get the sketch and they don't use the word final, they tell you sketch is very important. That's like saying that uh, this is like complaining that somebody told you that they'd give you their notes for like a class and then they hand you a piece of paper that's a fairly disorganized jumble of what took place because their, their way of taking notes is not the same way you organize and take your notes. But they are the notes. It's not like they gave you the answers to the questions. It's not like they gave you uh, images and photos or a video of the lecture. It's, here's the notes I took. Good luck. That's it. It's not like this was the classwork. This is the notes you took in class. This isn't the homework. These are the notes you took in class. This isn't the lecture the teacher gave you. It's the notes you took.
that's what sketches are. It's not the work. It's the idea on paper before you actually draw the idea out. Because when Courtney was like, hey, this isn't what I requested, it then led into this. First, I kind of thought that that price was going to then be taken out of the final cost of my tattoo, but then I find out that it was not. Um, I was still kind of blindsided, didn't really know what to say. Um, she asked which con which option worked best for me. Obviously, I picked number one because, like, it's super expensive. And she had these pictures, so I was confident that she was going to make me a beautiful piece. So Monday rolls around, and she sends me this. This is her. Yeah, and once again, this is a part of the process that I don't know of anybody ever charging for. Like, this sketch and shit? Like, no. But having not a sketch, but like a fleshed out idea, like, cause they would have shown you the sketch and been like, you're thinking like this, or do you want something more, something different, whatever. That's free. Her concept sketch. <laughs> <laughs> like, and typically that portion is done for free as like a, a gesture of good faith on their end that you are serious about having doing business with them and getting a tattoo from them <laughs> i'm so sorry but can you imagine spending thousands of dollars man thousands of your hard earned cash and, and the result is this like just look at this for a second it it's this is i'm sorry but i i, I don't care about the respecting all artists here like, i i get it it's a it's a hard medium to be in and stuff like that and i completely understand but this See, and like, I'm not going to rip them on the sketch thing at all. And f I'm just going to continue to defend the sketch thing because it says it's a fucking sketch. And this is people not understanding what a sketch is. When they said you get a sketch and that they wanted thousands of dollars for it. No. Did they tell you anywhere that this was going to be taken out of the, the cost of the final tattoo? Because you never said so, so you just assumed it was because of the price? Is that what it was? Because that was foolish of you. That was outright foolish of you to think and not be told that that's going to be reducted or deducted, rather, from your, your total expense on the tattoo at the end. Like, why would you assume that at all? So that's that's some foolishness on her part, which is probably just naivety and ignorance toward how the process works. But the sketch thing is just like I, you were told exactly what you were going to get. You just didn't understand it. You, you apparently don't understand the difference. If you want a direct example of this, I have sketches for... Uh, a table that I made for my dad doing woodworking. The sketches are literally that. They are sketches. And the sketch that she got for that fox looks way better than the sketches I gave him of his table. You know what looks really good? That table. You know what looks like absolute dog shit? The sketch. Because it's a sketch, it's not the actual product. This, I, I can't respect it. I, I can't. No, I'm not doing it. But yeah, as I said, I don't this respect it. I just understand that this is a problem of ignorance and naivety. That. This, you know, this wasn't what she really uh, requested. Let, let's just show the reference again. And let's show the result. <laughs> what the f is that? It is nothing like what I sent her. It's nothing like I, what I wanted. No, it's I not. I emailed her immediately. To the fact that you got absolutely nothing like what you asked for, I would be demanding my money back. I would also be not fucking doing anything with this idiot ever. Um, but it's still just like what... It said fucking sketch. Like, it's not right. It's not representing what it's supposed to do. But why the fuck did you think you were going to get anything worth your shit when they said it was a sketch? To tell her that I wanted a full fox, I wanted a tail, I wanted the fox to be the main feature i wanted to be less flowers more fox forward um and i said i know i picked option one but this isn't what i had asked for with my pictures i sent you 
try killing bugs the worry freeway and the fact that the other you way. had to reiterate this use light not odors or chemical insecticides as well as the fact trap. that you said you wanted the fox running and literally got none of it um that's why i would be saying i want my money back is because you didn't even present a sketch that was what it's supposed to be everything else about this that he's upset about was literally explained it in what she was told that if i wanted another sketch she was going to charge me the difference between option one and option number two which nope. is 2002 nope i ain't paying you shit and i want my money back 160 dollars she said it was my fault that i wasn't clear that i wanted a full fox but like honestly these are the two pictures i sent her both full fox both in the same position I, I don't know how much clearer I could have. Firstly, I just want to go back to what I mentioned earlier, this person, Courtney, being an absolutely lovely individual, because they have not got what they paid for. And when asking for what they paid for, the person came back to them and said, I'm going to charge you even more money. And it's like, mate, Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah. at least just be like, I'm not going to do that, but here's your money back. Obviously, the situation does not even go even close to that. It goes to the completely opposite trajectory of that. But yeah, Courtney with that, then yeah. it's just like, yeah, I, I really... Not wasn't good. happy about this and i'm not even criticizing courtney here but she is too nice and i completely understand it not all of us are are confrontational people i'm not really confrontational myself for the most part even though i run a channel she's right I'm to be upset about it it's issues, not what she asked is, for. i'm a keyboard warrior that's just but i think like she that. got taken and advantage of because she doesn't know I think she's what the, the hell she paid sort of person for. that Lindsay looks for somebody who really isn't gonna i i, I wouldn't say not kick up a fuss because obviously courtney did go against Lindsay in a situation was like hey i i deserve some form of money back or i'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here but she did speak against Lindsay. but i think Lindsay targets certain people who she knows that she can take advantage of just well, simply yeah. because they are nice people and yes this is just a theory but based on everything that we're going to be going into because as i said this is a big old deep dive and things just gets bigger and bigger and bigger that's kind of the conclusion that i've come to at this point and the comment section in general is just really shocked with not just the design but the fee as well because as i said earlier most people have not experienced like paying for a sketch paying for a consultation and people on the internet were starting to think this is just a and once again like all these people like i've never paid for a consultation or a design fee etc etc what she's calling consultation not the same thing the design not the same thing is the consultations that i've seen or heard of rather or have all been Here's the final product on something that's going to be expensive. I want you to come in and make sure it's what you want. Maybe the day before so that if you want some stuff changed, I have time to get it done. But it's pretty much all complete and ready to go as long as you're okay with it. Like you're right there at the end. And it's once again like 50 bucks. And that's, it's 50 bucks. It's literally just to cover the time of going over it one time before they put it on you. And then that 50 bucks is deducted from the overall expense. That's it. And it's just to make sure that they haven't wasted their time getting to that point with you. That's all. It's not even a big deal, really, because it's, it's deducted from the rest of the fee. It's... It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous and was the birth of Tattoo Gates. And like all massive political scandals in this world, it does also involve emails. Because Courtney in her part two video shows that there are 20 emails back and forth between her and Lindsay. And just yeah, because horribly, you did the whole Lindsay thing through social media is where you afterwards. found her. Like, now at no. this point of time, yes. Like you can find good artists and stuff through social media, but you don't. You don't just go, ah, yeah, that looks great. I want this done by you. Like, you have to actually physically see their shit. It's that simple. You can't just, oh, no, this looks really great when I see it on the internet. So I assume it looks really great all the time. It, it couldn't possibly be the lighting, the camera. It couldn't just be the angle. They couldn't touch it up afterwards in a program on their computer before they put it on the internet. The thing is... You need to see it in person and verify they're actually capable and you're not just getting some wonky ass shit. 
this situation wasn't public between these emails and that's probably why Lindsay was being so I guess cocky so uh, just honestly mean in the emails to Courtney but the moment that this whole thing went public I will again skip a bit forward in the timeline Lindsay has made her Instagram private and I will say do not go over there and, and, and harass this individual I wasn't going to show it but I've basically seen that this person's Instagram and shop has been in literally every article out there multiple videos videos of millions of views so it's nothing really I can do to hide this now and to be honest with you it is a public tattoo shop and I, I I'm not saying to not go there but I am putting this video up there almost as a warning to people that possibly she thinks that this is someone preferring to have no design fee so that they don't see the design or have any opportunity to make changes which once again I've seen people just take sketches and show them, but typically to people they know and be like, so this is kind of what I'm thinking. Is that kind of how you want it laid out? Yes. Boom. Final product. This kind of what you want. Yeah. All right. Good. Bam. Done. What color did you want this? And then they go and they shade it in. And that's why the sketch isn't colored in is because they aren't going to spend time coloring in a sketch. They aren't going to color in something that's not complete. They don't even really color in the tattoo that they do that gets put on you as an outline. It is the outline and then they shade everything in. It, it's This is someone who's just trying to get money ahead of time for people she knows she's not ever going to do any work on in a way she doesn't have to give back to you for as little effort as possible. Because once again, everyone I know who actually does anything like this, even remotely the same, it is the last step right before you get your tattoo basically. It's the last thing you're doing with the artist before you get the tattoo and it's basically just to pay them for all the time leading up to it and it's still deducted from the overall price at the end. Not to mention the fact that once again, it's to make sure that you're serious about it because it's an expensive piece. I know people that do this that don't charge, do this very often. They literally do it when it's a piece that is going to cost a couple thousand dollars and that's it were considering it i don't know who but maybe there was somebody that was gonna but yes i'm getting a bit ahead of myself here let's actually get into the email part of this so here's the email where she tells me that um i didn't tell her that i wanted the fox to have a full fox um even though i sent her two pictures saying i wanted the fox to have a full fox so you can pause to read now i am gonna read you these emails and i'm gonna now if you didn't say it but you just sent the pictures then yeah that's you you didn't communicate very well. You could do much better. You could be like, yeah, I like the full fox look of these. But if you just sent pictures and were like, well, it has full foxes, so she should know it has full foxes, then you are, to some extent, responsible for that failure. They give you a bit of a warning. There's nothing explicit in these emails, but you may get annoyed of somebody being a complete and utter bellend because being a bellend can be a very annoying thing to witness. And that's exactly what we have in these emails. So this is Lindsay the Tattoo Artist saying, when we discussed the fox, you didn't say that the fox had to be in a downward position. You didn't mention that the tail had to be visible. You said you liked the fact that it looked like it was in motion, which I do feel I captured in the concept I offered. It's running and leaping through the frame of flowers the petals give the impression it's just burst through the flowers with no time to waste look Lindsay, the only time being wasted right now is mine i'm sweaty i'm hot like i don't see it that way when i see that sketch but once again it's a sketch at the same time if you don't say what you want you just send pictures and go then you are going to be partially to blame. If all you said is, I like that it looks like it's in motion, then that doesn't mean that you need the whole body. She's right. You can make it look in motion another way. If you don't say that you want less flowers, then they might not think that that's what you want. You, you have to tell them what you want. 
you cannot assume that they can read your mind because that's not a skill that people possess. I'm bothered and having to read your bullshit excuses. Please, just stop what you're doing right now. This is the art you made. There is no burst or jump through the flowers. What you are saying in this email... I'm happy you pulled it up and made that statement because I guarantee you that's exactly what these pedals here are for, is these aren't just pedals that are here for no reason. They're here because the fox is coming through. The paws up like that, you could argue that the fox is leaping through this what's supposed to be she called a frame of flowers which i highly disagree it just looks like a vine with a couple of random flowers thrown on it and the these are falling because of it jumping through there like that's that would capture motion you're not going to see it in the sketch because the sketch is an idea it's not a product is such a lie. I do not understand how you can charge thousands of dollars for this and then double down on it. But then, ladies and gentlemen... Well, not even just double down on it, but then also uh, make sure that it's non-refundable, because you've stated that it's non-refundable, right? And then you also don't compensate that cost and expense into the cost of the actual product which it should be because a hundred and eighty dollars for a consultation where you just tell them what you want is absurd fifty dollars to actually sit down with you with the drawing in its final state and be like yeah or i i'd like it more like this and then they go oh, okay i got you and then they go make the changes fifty dollars for that that gets wrapped up into fifty dollars that's taken off of the overall expense of the tattoo is sensible but doing it this way is absurd a thousand dollars for you to have a sketch not a product a sketch and one request of change oh, i'd like this different or on and this is on top of the hundred and eighty dollars to tell them that you would like to do business with them, which is ridiculous. Like, that's not even a consultation at that point. They're calling it a consultation fee, but it's not. That's not a consultation at all. And after this, it gets even worse. Like, she goes from doubling down to then criticizing the reference photos that were originally provided. She said that the images that were sent didn't feel like the foxes were in natural positions. I mean, these foxes are going to be going on the arm. It's not really a natural thing that happens on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, I, I really don't think it's that deep. Isn't the whole point of... Now, I, I agree that's not a very natural position. I also agree that it doesn't matter. It's getting put on someone's fucking arm. The thing is, you should have been able to know from the type of art she does if this is something that she cares about in her art. Is if it looks natural when she does things like this. Does she care if the fox looks natural, the dog looks natural, the cat looks natural, the birds look natural? Is that something she cares about when she does it? Because that would be her style, part of her style. Art to, to draw abstract things in, in some scenarios where things do look a little bit unique, a little bit unusual. If somebody has requested something in a certain way and paid thousands of dollars for that, just do it. Even if it is unnatural to your point of view, they have paid you thousands of dollars. To they have, however, they've paid an artist thousands of dollars to be an artist. Like, does that make sense? Every artist has their own style. We aren't shown this person's style of art, so we don't know if that's the case with her. But the thing is, you choose the tattoo artist because you like their style of art and you like their quality of work. You don't... You don't choose them because, ah, oh, look, this looks great. You know what I want you to do is something that looks really different than anything else you do and I don't like your style of art I want you to do it more like uh, this person's art that's not how you get your tattoos at all just do what that's not how you get art done. because any other regular that's like 
This is like somebody saying, hey, you know what, though? I'm going to go and ask uh, – I'm going to go talk to Eminem and Jay-Z at the same time about an album idea I have. And uh, they're going to make a country album with me that's not pop at all. It's just all country. And they've got to learn how to do the drawl and everything because it's not at all their style of music. They don't make music in that style. They don't make music with that rhythm. They don't make music in that vo like that vocal way. They're more lyrical. This isn't going to be that way. But we're going to make them do this piece of art the way that I want them to do this piece of art because I'm going to pay them to do this piece of art the way that I want it done. That's not how artists operate. Thousands of poets that just do what they've requested because any other regular tattoo artist out there would. And there is also the debate it's in the situation true, really. of plagiarism and copying images with these sketches, which we're not going to get into yet, but I, I, I will just say it makes this it entire complaint business. even more ironic. But then we move on to the next part of the emails where she says that they're not accurate to body position and that she had the impression of she was looking for a fox on the run and the idea of a fox moving forward and basically that's why they drew it in this way and look i completely understand that miscommunication can happen in this so i understand what the artist is saying is like i made it so that it's leaping through here that's movement that like if it's leaping it's running they aren't leaping through shit when they get up they aren't just getting up and just oh let me leap through things and around stuff that's not how they do it they did they would be running and leaping through shit like i get it and that's why I'm saying I feel like it's probably your fault for failing to communicate correctly what you desired and instead basically left it to the photos. In this world, personally, I'm the worst person on planet I have to communicate with. I will respond to your text a week later with a one-word response, and I can understand that, especially in business, you know. People do, you know, miscommunicate, and it can lead to things being produced which you didn't exactly want, and what you do there is you have a conversation, a little debate between each other about what actually needs to be done here, and you resolve it. Which is when you would have an actual consultation with your artist about the work that they are expected to do with you and go over the changes that you would like to have done. Which is why what they're doing and charging as a consultation fee is not, in fact, a consultation fee. It's a fee to talk about maybe having business with each other which is not charged for by anyone at all anywhere but what you don't do is then say well i'm not going to fix this problem but i am going to charge you even more money if you want something different and by different i mean the original thing that you paid thousands of dollars for so now i paid her um uh two thousand six hundred ninety five dollars the consultation the design fee plus a thousand dollar deposit for my actual tattoo date to book that and um, she's telling me that she wants another 2260 um, in order to just redraw my sketch even though I told her I sent her the pictures and showed her exactly what I wanted she's saying it's my communication skills and that I didn't communicate exactly what I wanted at this point of the video I don't even remember a thousand dollar deposit fee being mentioned before but yes also on top of all the other fees you're paying at a thousand dollar deposit fee now i don't exactly know why there needs to be a thousand dollar fee for a deposit that's see and that's typically what that fifty dollars for the consultation is for the people that i know that i mentioned do this you pay it and then now i'm saying it's being deducted that's because what it is is basically just the same shit here like it's a deposit if you're going to give me this much up front we're taking it out on the back end. That seems a little bit extortionate. A thousand dollars sounds like something you pay for. Yeah, a and once again, a thousand dollars is makes far a more than bit what more my sense because you're living in somebody's apartment and paying rents. In this situation, you're paying for some art on a skin. That. I can't really make out any justifications here. So maybe on top of the other two things I mentioned earlier. I should also point out that the people I've mentioned, and I've, I've specified, only do this when jobs are going to be a few thousand dollars for the tattoo those jobs are very rare it, it's not like they're charging thousands of dollars for tattoos all the time it's usually a few hundred bucks it, it, but breaching into thousands is not common at all and they do very well
of things not being provided that you asked for, no resolve being happened after that. I think we are going to have to add on free. There is just too many extortionate prices in this situation because, you know, yeah, usually I am up for people getting a bag and stuff, but this is just taking the piss at this point. And in the emails, Courtney is genuinely being very fair. They're simply just asking for a refund on this $1,000 deposit. And I can completely understand that given the fact that no tattoo at this point of time has actually even happened. And you're probably thinking, yeah, that's a pretty justifiable reason to want your money back. Well, not just the money, but just one part of the money. She's not asking for everything back. She's just asking no. for the one little... No, you give me back all my fucking money. Like, because you didn't deliver at all what I asked for. Right? Like, you, you literally have to stick with, the, like, you did not give me what I asked for. I want back all my money. You can't, you can't flip-flop on this. It, it's literally, I want back all my money. You did not deliver what I wanted. Or, it's, you delivered what we'd agreed upon, but I don't like it, therefore you get to keep my money. Those are the options. Little thing, the deposit. And how does Lindsay respond to it? Well, she, she says this. And of course, you and I know that this response is going to be absolutely tragic. So then she kindly comes back and tells me that I can um, do this option where I just pay for option one again for another 1695 instead of the 2260 and she'll make me another sketch. So again, I'm just trying to make her understand that I didn't, I wasn't aware when I booked the consultation that I was gonna have to pay this design fee. <laughs> this is genuinely absolutely outrageous. Like this is, it's straight up the way that they're charging her for all this shit is that's the scam. That's legitimately the scam of the entire situation is that they're just getting you to pay for shit and pay for shit and pay for shit and they're targeting somebody who doesn't understand how to make this argument at all like you're too passive you don't understand that in the situation of business and money it is literally you either got what you agreed for like you made an agreement with somebody and you got what you agreed upon therefore you now have to compensate that person for the agreed upon, agreed upon amount or whatever it is. If you're trading bales of hay for advice, then they gave you advice that you didn't like, but they gave you advice, but you didn't specify, you better give them his fuck bales of hay, okay? That's the situation this is. You can't just, oh, well, we made an agreement and then I'm trying to change the agreement that we agreed to so uh you want to charge me money for that yes business wise that makes sense money wise that makes sense uh from certain legal viewpoints that makes sense from other legal views it's a scam you're just scamming people out of money and this is the way you're doing it from a personal perspective as the woman who's trying to get this done, it's a scam because I'm not happy. But at the same time, this is what I wanted. This is what I agreed to. And instead of that, you provided this. I don't owe you for this. And because that's what you're trying to charge me for and keep my money for now, I want all my money back. Or you agreed and now you want to change the agreement and you owe them money as well as whatever the new agreement is because that was the original agreement. Outrageous. And I'm going to put you guys in a scenario now. To the people that have never had a tattoo, like myself, I'm going to give you a scenario which I think can be quite similar. Similar. Here. For example, you go into a restaurant, you pay for a big old bowl of carbonara. You sit at your seat for 20 minutes, and then the waiter comes, and what he does is um, place a big old bowl of did. plain spaghetti. There's no sauce, there's no bacon, there's no cheese, there's nothing. Just spaghetti. You paid $25 for that spaghetti, thinking that you're going to get carbonara, and then you go and complain to the waiter saying, hey, hold on. I want to listen to this again because I think he just explained this fucking weird because the sound 
clips fuck with me. Bowl enough. of carbonara. You sit at your seat for 20 minutes, and then the waiter comes, and what he does is um, place a me, big old bowl of doing? plain spaghetti. There's no sauce, there's no bacon, there's no cheese, there's no... So, what you're saying is that you've asked for, you've agreed upon a service, and then they delivered a different service and are expecting the compensation that you agreed upon for the different service. That's the perspective he's taking on this. But we aren't really seeing that at all because the only way you have any kind of notion that everything is supposed to be there because we didn't see an email that included a discussion of I want the whole fox. She said she said it and I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt that she did. The thing is, that's why she needs to make this argument and say, no, you did not agree. You owe me everything. But what she's doing is not this. What she is doing is, well, maybe we should just change the agreement then. No. All your shit back. And you walk away nothing just spaghetti Find you paid artist. 25 dollars for that spaghetti thinking that you're gonna get carbonara and then you go and complain to the waiter saying hey oh, this isn't what i asked for could you please bring me what i asked for and they turn to you and they say nope we're gonna take away that spaghetti and then we're gonna charge you what you paid for that spaghetti for your original order of carbonara you are paying two prices for the one thing that you actually wanted it makes no sense and so yeah and that's the argument that's being made that is a scam but like i said if you're looking at it through the lens of we made this agreement and now you're changing the agreement which is how she's phrasing it then she's right to be compensated for both agreements You see what I'm saying? The artist is making this argument. The like he is making the same argument I made, where you have you fell short and you delivered something else that I didn't ask for at all. This lady who got this shit done is like, okay, well look, I, we made this agreement, but like you can keep some of it, but give me back some of it. Nope, it's not how it works. We made this agreement. You did not meet the agreement. Give me back all my shit. She's too nice about it, and that's why this whole issue is an issue. To be honest, maybe my analogy there makes no sense, but I, I hope you kind of get what I'm trying to say here. Pretty much, this whole thing is absolute bollocks. And at this point of Tattoo Gate, I can completely understand why a lot of people are starting to call this a scam. Even though other developments came after this, which actually showed real deceptive practices, at this point of time, given what we know and what we've seen in these emails, I really can only say that, in my personal opinion, not from the legal sense, but just in general an opinion based on shithousery i can see this and think that this is in my opinion a scam not in the legal sense because we've got to say that for legal reasons but in my opinion this is a very sussy wussy situation but then it gets yeah like i said depending on the way you look at it legally it's both things it really all depends on how you're looking at it Congratulations, that's what lawyers do. One lawyer will tell you that it was legal, the other lawyer, lawyer will tell you that it was not. And that's why. Because you can look at it from different perspectives and make the argument both ways. That's exactly what this is. It's a bit strange because in these emails, Lindsay brings up the fact that there was a fourth option that she could have taken in this situation. Because you know with those three options which I presented earlier of the $1,500 fee, the $2,000 something and $6,000 fee. Well, according to Lindsay in the emails, there was a fourth option outside of a collaboration based project, which is pretty much when you provide some art, they make their own art and you come together to make a piece and you make a tattoo two out of that piece that's the most that common way it goes what down three options were in the situation but according to lynn typically what happens is you provide your references and they make something similar to the references in their style of art that's typically how that works which is why i feel like it's a scam is because i'm familiar with how that works therefore i understand I tell you this is what I would like you give me that with your style of art 
it's not that big a deal. But, like, that wasn't offered as one of the original options, which just furthers the uh, the sense that it's a scam. The exorbitant price is for consultation fee that's not for consultation. It's, it's for... Basically, it's for meeting the person and seeing if you're even going to conduct business, which you don't charge money for. Easy in these emails, this wasn't the only option, and there was actually a fourth option. And I understand, yeah, probably a little bit conf And actually, that kind of fucks the artist pretty hard if uh, if they were all to try and take shit to court, right? Because you have something that straddles a line where a lawyer could argue either way. And then you're also like, but I withheld information. And withholding information is not going to help you out at all in any legal sense for pretty much any kind of situation. Fused because that's a lot of words what I just said there about things that you may not possibly understand. So what I'm going to do is once again play Courtney's TikTok. I don't think that she was clear. I would have picked option four if I knew that that was an option for me. Um, Most and people the fact do that. that. I paid her sixteen ninety five for that. Fox sketch, I feel like there's good compensation for her time, but I think that the thousand dollar deposit that I gave her for. No, that wasn't good compensation for her time. That was exorbitant. Exorbitant. That portion that she did with you for $1,600 should have been free. Or it should have been $1,600 that is taken out of the final product, which was also not the case my tattoo session that is not going to be happening um i would like that returned now i just want to interject here quickly and there's nothing deep or philosophical i can offer here other than just saying this is so unbelievably nasty and harsh let's just think about some context for a second here i understand that you'll probably say oh well you shouldn't be spending the money if it is that situation anyway but i am going to say think of the economic climate that we currently live in it's a difficult world that we're in and paying for things right now is quite difficult given how expensive stuff is so when yeah, but she knew that, and she still decided she was going to enter into this agreement of $1,600 on top of almost $1,700, I guess, on top of a $1,000 deposit. So clearly the money wasn't her concern when she was doing it and thought that she was going to get what she wanted. So, no. The problem is, is that she doesn't understand how tattoos are charged. She doesn't understand how the pricing is figured out. She doesn't understand the basics of it essentially to enough of an extent to recognize that this is a scam somebody isn't even getting the product that they paid for and you're refusing to give the money back that is absolutely despicable and as i said people are probably going to say oh well you shouldn't be spending money like that if the climate is that difficult I i'm sorry but no. i don't know the financial situation of courtney but because somebody is, is in a bad and that's why I'm not making that argument. It's why I said this is dumb because she thought that this was worth that amount of money to begin with. It's like you have to base it off the context of what she is doing and the decision she's knowingly making. All of which was that money thinking that it was going toward the product. So that's you can't you can't act like, oh, no, but money and expense like he's doing when at the same time. For this individual, that seems to have not been an issue. Bad financial place, that doesn't mean that they don't have the right to have nice things and treat themselves every now and again. I absolutely hate that mindset. And again, I don't know what Courtney's situation is, but as somebody that didn't have much money growing up, I hated it when people said that sort of thing. And I still do today. Yeah, it's it's but I'm, I'm going a bit off, uh, on a tangent here. Let's uh, continue with things getting absolutely terrible. It would also... So it'd be nice oh, if she Jesus. would take some responsibility to say that I forgot to tell you about option four or I should have asked more questions um, during the process. Like, she's the professional. She designs these tattoos for a living. Um, See, once again, too nice. Option four should have been included in the initial discussion of how to go about getting a tattoo. It should have been one of the things that you were first told about when they said, here are your options. Number four should have been right there as well for you to be like, oh yeah, I could do that one. That one makes a lot of sense for what I kind of want to do. Whereas what you went through was funneling you because you're ignorant to the process and too fucking nice. They funneled you right into a way that you're going to spend the most money for the most amount, like the, for a more personalized thing and a more custom piece of art.
is like you're basically commissioning a custom piece of art at this point, not just simply getting a tattoo. If she didn't feel like she was clear on what I wanted, I would have preferred more that's, questions. That's the difference um, we between We met for half those. an hour on Zoom. I was supposed to get a 45-minute consultation. It only took half an hour. She had 15 more minutes to ask me more questions if she thought she needed more information. I just didn't feel like I, I, I didn't. I can't read her mind either. I didn't know that I had to tell her I wanted a full fox. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, not to sound like. So she never said she wanted a full fox. There you go. She just left it up to the pictures to depict that she wanted a full fox. And wasn't clear enough on I want something that's very similar to this. Like, I want basically this type of fox work done, but if it was, like, up and looked more running, I'd be happier with it. Could have said it that way and it would have worked out, but the fact that she didn't present, like, half of her idea for how this tattoo is going to work out vocally, she ended up in a fucked up situation that is compounded by the fact that she doesn't understand how tattoo pricing works at all and just got taken advantage of. Congratulations. Ugh. That is that is ridiculous. I'll save the other half of that for tomorrow though cuz I Ugh. I just don't want to watch an hour of that, that's for sure.